video Japanese from Ghana. I see from Giants Rescue, Mariade from uh, Ghana, and I also see from Giants Stephen Okello Ojara from Uganda. And we're looking forward to having a couple of people join as time boxes on. And uh, we just want to indeed let all of us know that yes, the baton must be continued, and it's only if we stay relentless and decide to continue strengthen. And it's in this course that we decided to open, celebrate and give credence this day for men in particular to stand strong and also for us to be celebrated by women. And we are honored to see Freedom Jack Rescue Ade join us to, to, to give credence to us for us to continue the baton relentless. So give the baton again to our host today to continue um, whilst um, we, 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 we listen to him and learn from him from the great knowledge and expertise he has towards confronting issues relating us in general as humanity towards our stand in making the world a better place. So from the of Lazarus, we leave the podium to you and we know that everything is going to be very revolutionary uh, as we depend uh, uh, and, and listen to your, uh, um, your, your, your quintessential dialogue today um, to be able to be strengthened for the road ahead. So we listen to you today and we hand over everything to you to progress. And uh, one thing we must know is that um, we must be strengthened that regardless of the number, whoever is here is one way or the other being so integrated towards being radically inclined for the journey ahead. So let's be strengthened all of us here and pay attention uh, towards what lies ahead from our presenter today, who is my name, Freedom Giant Job, Lazarus. The morning session was very, 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 very phenomenal. And all those who were there, I don't know whether they are sleeping. <laughs> That's why none of them are here this afternoon. But we could bear attestation to uh, what happened in the morning. And uh, we had a couple of Freedom Giants from Cameroon, especially, who joined, and Uganda. And just a few from Ghana who joined and who spoke credentially on the need for us to hold and reunify each other. You know, that was the main basis of, of which we've already always been talking about. And you could see the analogy was already inclined. And we know that today, too, from the job, Lazarus will corroborate with analogies today, exactly, for us to be trying to move ahead. So we leave it to you, and uh, we, we, we want to listen from you, to you from what you have for us. At the same time, well, we we'll see you so phenomenally here, and we're ready to hear from you. We can feel the intense preparation you've made towards blessing us and revolutionizing us this afternoon. And we are really inclined, you know, to stand again as strong radicalists from the hearings of you, great freedom giant Job Lazarus. And uh, to all of us freedom giants, freedom giant Job Lazarus is a great pan Africanist who speaks across the African anatomy to various institutions and to various people, talking about them for the need for them to be really relentless. And we are really humbled to have our freedom giants again speak to his own organization, African purposes on the relation between nationalism and patriotism and why indeed we have to hold both of them together in defending our continent against all odds so that we can revitalize again and restore the potency for a better Africa for posterity. We're humbled to have you and uh, we welcome you. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I'm very grateful to, to, to be part of this wonderful event. I want to begin by thanking uh, Dennis Lumumba, who delivered a very powerful lecture in the morning. I, I attended. And, uh, oh, okay. And, and I was impressed by how young Africans are actually talking about uh, building the continent. We can see that the continent has a great future in the young people. I want to thank our president for inviting me to deliver this lecture. And I want to thank the entire Global Freedom Board and all the freedom giants present with us today. I am extremely grateful to, to deliver this Pan-African lecture today on a subject that is as important to Africans as life itself. So I thank the President and the, the entire team at African Voices International for being the light in darkness in the lives of many Africans. The future of Africa lies in the hands of the young Africans. And if passionate young Africans come together like this to discuss the future of Africa, then we can be sure that Africa indeed has a bright future. For no one will do for us what we're supposed to do for ourselves. In my lecture, I've been asked to concentrate on two questions, two critical questions. One, what makes a national anatomy feel superior to another national anatomy? And two, what makes various national anatomies superpowers? 
So two critical questions that we are going to answer in this lecture. In September 2022, I met an American at Cairo International Airport in Egypt. As we were talking, he asked me if I ever desired to leave Africa and settle in another continent. I told him, as an African, I pledge allegiance to Africa. I had a duty to build Africa. If I would ever leave Africa, then I would do so to build my capacity to return and serve Africa better. I would not leave Africa to run away from Africa because Africa is my home. He was shocked by my answer. He revealed to me that he had met many Africans in America who had no interest in ever returning to Africa, and they talked badly about Africa with no love at all for the continent. Today we must ask ourselves, is patriotism in Africa a myth or might? I have moved to some countries and met people from different parts of the world and different walks of life. I have realized that deep down in their hearts, all people naturally love their countries. Everyone is naturally patriotic. To many people, especially in Africa, patriotism is a myth, while to many, it is a might. However, patriotism is nothing to a hungry person. Patriotism does not mean anything to those battling health conditions in failed health systems in their countries. Patriotism is nothing to those who do not feel they belong to their countries. Patriotism is meaningless to those who are prisoners in their own countries. Patriotism is a fallacy to that little girl crying for peace. Patriotism is meaningless to that single mother struggling to raise her children amidst the crippling economy. Patriotism is senseless to that man in detention without trial. Patriotism has no meaning to those engulfed by wars. Are we really eating properly in Africa? No. Is there any meaningful education taking place all over Africa? No. Are we really secure in Africa? No. Do we have properly functioning health systems in all the countries in Africa? No. Do we have in place proper leadership in all countries in Africa? No. Do we have proper economic systems in all African countries? No. Are the resources in Africa properly utilized for the benefit of the, the citizens in all the countries of Africa? No. Is patriotism in Africa a myth or might? In his masterpiece, The Wretched of the Earth, the great Franz Fanon wrote, each generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. As Africans, we have divine obligations to love Africa, to build Africa, to serve Africa, to transform Africa, to develop Africa, to market Africa, to stand for Africa with all our might. We owe allegiance to our countries, in particular in Africa in general. No one will ever build Africa for us. We can go all over the world, but we should remember to come back and build Africa, our home. We must instill the love for Africa in the minds of every African in the world, so that even when an African is out of Africa, they know and appreciate that they owe Africa their fruits. Therefore, they have a noble duty to work for the development of, of the continent wherever they go. Every African must know that they must make their contributions to the development of the continent. As Africans, it is our duty to develop Africa, for no one will ever come from any place and do for us what we are supposed to do for ourselves. Nobody will ever come from any place and develop Africa for us. No one will ever come from any place and build Africa for us. It is our duty to build Africa. We must therefore change our mindsets as Africans and first of all love being Africans. We must identify with our roots. We must be proud of ourselves. We, we are Africans. We are proud to be Africans. We are the giants of Africa. Many of us have been made to hate being Africans. We must not allow anyone to make us feel inferior, for we are not inferior to any race in the world. No race is ever superior to any race in the world. We must love ourselves and have high self-esteem as, as Africans. When we love ourselves, we will then love Africa. When we love Africa, we will then work hard to develop Africa. When we develop Africa, Africa will then occupy her rightful place in the world. We cannot work hard to to develop Africa unless we love ourselves as Africans first, and hence we love Africa. Africa is our mother whom we must serve. We owe it to ourselves to develop our motherland. No one will ever develop our motherland for us. As Africans, we must take it upon ourselves to restore the dignity of Africa. No one will best glorify Africa except Africans. Love being an African. Love yourself love Africa and you will make your contributions to the development of the continent. If you don't love yourself, you will never be proud of yourself. Accordingly, you will never be proud of being an African. 
Consequently, you will never love Africa, and therefore, you will never do anything serious to develop Africa. There are many Africans who are biologically Africans, but psychologically not Africans. Those people are a serious threat to the development of Africa. They don't make any positive contribution to the development of Africa. If anything, they cannot wait to get out of Africa. Many of them are used to destroy Africa. You cannot destroy a continent you truly love. You cannot destroy a country you truly love. You cannot destroy a people you truly love. Africa will best be developed by those who are both biologically and psychologically Africans. When we instill the love for Africa in, in the minds of Africans, we will then have Africans who are both biologically and psychologically Africans. Those are the people who will develop the continent. Those are the people we can count on to possibly transform Africa. Those are the people who will propel Africa to greater heights. I was born in Gulu, Uganda, but for the world. I was not born for only the people of Gulu. The whole world is my mission field. I am a global citizen on a global mission in the, in the global arena. Yet I understand that no matter how high a bird flies, its grave is right on earth. No matter where I go, I cannot forget that I have a duty to make positive contributions to the world, starting right from home, Africa. For charity begins from home. As Africans, if we don't take charge of Africa, then other people will come from outside Africa and exploit Africa while we watch and lament. Today, many Africans are only complaining and lamenting, both from within Africa and the diaspora, about the various issues in Africa. But they are not doing anything beyond complaining and lamenting. I asked those in the diaspora, what are you doing from the diaspora to address the various issues at home? I asked those at home, what are you doing to address the various issues at home? And I asked every African, what are you doing about the issues in Africa? It is sad that for many Africans, Africa has become only a cemetery. They go out of Africa on their feet, but return in coffins. That is very unfortunate. Come home and build Africa. Come home and build home. Come home and develop home. Do not wait to return in a coffin. We should be patriotic enough to make our personal contributions to, to, to develop Africa. How do we start to love our countries and ultimately Africa? We start by loving ourselves first. If you don't love yourself, then it is very difficult to love your country. If you don't love your country, you will want to leave it. If you leave it, you will not want to go back. If you don't want to go back, you will return in a coffin. Of what use would you have been to your people? Let's love ourselves first, then we can love our countries, and ultimately we can love Africa. When we love Africa, we can then serve her with all our might. It is upon us to decide what we will do for Africa. We will never serve Mother Africa with all our might if we don't love her. While speaking in Accra, Ghana, on the occasion of Ghana's 40th independence anniversary celebrations on the 6th of March, 1997, Malimo Julius Nyerere said, the outside world hardly recognizes our Ghanaian-ness or Tanzanian-ness. What the outside world recognizes about us is our African-ness. I love that statement. That's a deep statement that demands serious meditation. In the eyes of non-Africans, we are all Africans. Whether you are a Ugandan or Nigerian or Congolese or Burundian or Ghanaian, it doesn't matter to them. We are all Africans. That should be the basis of our unity. That is how they see us. The question is, how do we see ourselves? How do you see yourself as an African? We are not apologetic for being Africans. We are proud of being Africans. The world treats us as if we should apologize for being Africans. <laughs> it is not a crime to be an African. We don't have to apologize for being Africans. We love what we are. We are proud Africans. We are unapologetically proud Africans. Our identity was destroyed when we were colonized. However, it is our duty to reclaim our identity by seeking the right knowledge from the right sources and applying the lessons correctly. In the wise words of the great Frederick Douglass, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Truly, knowledge frees a slave. It is our duty to seek the right knowledge with which we will liberate our minds to liberate Africa. Africa counts on us, not those whom we think will liberate her. Are you one of those who will build Africa? Should Africa count on you? Will you serve Mother Africa? Behold, she looks up to you. Everyone should find their niche and make their contributions in that niche as they serve Africa.
If you can sing, sing. If you can write, write. If you can speak, speak. If you can teach, teach. If you can draw, draw. If you can develop a technology, develop it. If you can lead in an area, lead. Whatever you can do to develop Africa, do it with all your might. The great Mahatma Gandhi is believed to have said, be the change you want to see in the world. It is up to you to decide what kind of change you want to see in Africa and be that change and work for that change. What kind of change do you want to see in Africa? Are you that change? What are you doing to see that change? So what, what makes a national anatomy feel superior to another national anatomy? And what makes various national anatomies superpowers? There are critical things that make countries superpowers. We cannot look at all of them, but we will look at a few of them. The first one is knowledge of history. African wisdom teaches that if you don't know where the rain started beating you, you will not know how far you have come. For us to understand the present and make proper plans for the future, we must understand the past. People in powerful countries have proper knowledge of their history. The history of many African countries was not even written by Africans. That's so unfortunate. If we should be powerful, then we must know our history first. What exactly was Africa before colonization? What exactly happened to Africa due to colonization? What did Africa become because of colonization? We must answer these questions. Only then can we be able to plan properly for our future. We will be slaves for as long as we don't know our real history. I challenge fellow Africans to invest time in, in finding out the real history of Africa from the right sources. Find out the history of your country. Find out the history of Africa. How can we properly define where we are going if we don't know where we are coming from as well as where we are? Unless we know our real history, we will be brainwashed and re brainwashed. Africans know their history so that you can properly design your future from where you are. The second thing is strong ideology. Every superpower in the world has a belief, a creed, a philosophy that is instilled in the minds of the people. The ideology is very strong and the people buy that ideology and make it their own and everybody fights to make sure that our ideology is respected all over the world. Now what is our common creed as Africans? What do we collectively believe in as Africans? How strong is our ideology? A weak ideology will not bring us the results we want as Africans. So we need to design a very strong Pan-African ideology that can make us work together for Africa. That ideology must be instilled in the mind of every African so that we can work together to implement it. Unless we teach that ideology to all Africans, it will never be successfully implemented and hence we will not get the results we want. Every powerful country in the world has a creed, a belief, a philosophy that is in the DNA of the people. What is our creed as Africans? Do we just say what we don't believe in? The third thing that may come to superpowers are strong systems and institutions. All superpowers in the world have strong systems and institutions. History has demonstrated that no person can ever fight a strong system and win. Only systems can fight systems and win. In the words of the 11th president of India, APJ Abdul Kalam, strength respects strength. This is a very critical statement. Strength respects strength. Strength never respects weakness. In order for Africa to be respected by the superpowers, Africa must become a superpower itself. We need strong systems and institutions to fight the strong systems and institutions that are against us Africans. We need strong institutions for our people in all aspects of life, business, health, culture, agriculture, politics, religion, and many other areas. The next thing is leadership as opposed to politics. Superpowers have very strong leadership. We need good leadership as Africans so that we can organize ourselves and negotiate favorably with the outside continents. We need leadership as opposed to politics. For politics divides while leadership unites. Politics thrives on division while leadership thrives on unity. Good leadership will develop Africa. Politics will destroy Africa while leadership will develop it. Lord Acton was right when he said, power tends to corrupt. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. He added that despotic power is always accompanied by corruption of morality. This is exactly what is happening in many African countries, including my country, Uganda. In Africa, we have many wrong people in the right positions of leadership. There is too much politics in Africa, but very little leadership. 
where there is too much politics, there is too little leadership. And leaders are eliminated very fast by the politicians. Politicians are dealers. They don't really care about patriotism. They care about the next elections, not the next generations. Therefore, they can destroy generations to win elections. Leaders care about the next generations, not elections. Leaders can lead people to love their countries. Think of leaders like Kwame Krum of Ghana, Thomas Sankar of, of uh, Burkina Faso, the great Marcus Garvey, Nelson Mandela of South Africa, and John Pombe Magufuli of Tanzania. To date, they still inspire Africans to love Africa. Leaders do not love their countries because they love their countries so much that they cannot destroy it. They therefore sacrifice for their people instead of exploiting them like politicians. This is what is lacking in Africa. In many African countries, we lack leadership, good leadership. I remember this, this very interesting story of a politician in some village in Uganda who was campaigning and he told the people, we have a tree with fruits up. So push me to climb the tree to go up. If I go up, I will shake the branches and the fruits will fall and you will collect the fruits. So this man was selected. He was pushed to climb the tree. He went up. Unfortunately, after reaching up, he started eating the fruits when he was <laughs> on the tree. He forgot to shake the branches. That is what politicians do. A leader will go up the tree and before eating even the first fruit, he will shake the branches and make sure people down are eating. Then he can start eating. So we need leaders to make us superpower as a continent. Just because somebody occupies a position does not mean they are leader. Even misleaders occupy positions of leadership. How do you know a leader? And how do you know a politician? Very simple, by their fruits. We live in a world in which many of those who have the power to possibly transform the world lack the will to do so. But those who have the will to transform the world lack the power. What do we do? Those with the power must develop the will, otherwise they will misuse their power. In Africa, we have many politicians today masquerading as leaders. So they have powers which they do not know how to use. Accordingly, they misuse their powers and exploit the very people they are supposed to serve with their powers. This is unfortunate. We can never become a superpower as a continent that way. Ahmed Sekou Toure, the first president of Guinea, once said, when you are praised by the colonialists, it means that you are bad for your people. When they say you are bad, it means that you are good for your people. The day they say I am good, that will mean I betrayed you. I love this statement. Let us all be leaders and lead Africa to prosperity. We are weak politically as a continent. Until we get leaders who will lead Africa to prosperity, we shall never become a superpower. Unifying the continent is possible, but that needs proper leadership. We could then have one government, one army, one currency, and we can then become a superpower as a continent. Africa will never become a superpower without proper leadership. Africa will never develop without proper leadership. Africa will never occupy her place in the world without proper leadership. Leadership is the missing link in Africa. The next thing is culture. People in powerful countries know and appreciate their cultures. African wisdom teaches that. He who does not know his culture will be eternally a slave. Every river has a source. If a river disconnects from its source, it dries. A tree whose roots are cut off dies. A house without foundation cannot stand. We should move with our culture to technology, modernity, and civilization. The Chinese come to Africa with their culture. They don't abandon their culture for our culture. The same applies to those in Europe and the Western world. A Chinese comes to Africa as a Chinese. He masters an African language but remains a Chinese, both biologically and psychologically. A mentally enslaved African drops his culture at the slightest opportunity. As proud Africans, we should identify with our culture. Of course, we need to promote the positive aspects of our culture and drop the negative ones. Culture is a unifying factor. Now we have selfishness brought about mainly by capitalism. Many of us live on the philosophy that every man for himself, but God for us all. We need selflessness in Africa, not selfishness. We should promote our languages. The colonialists changed our names and destroyed our cultural systems. They made us believe that our systems were evil, so that anyone who follows our systems and is rooted in our culture is seen to be evil. This is mental imprisonment, which we should not accept. We must rise and rebuild our systems.
We must believe in ourselves as Africans. We must not accept foreign cultures and abandon ours. We shall not develop on the basis of foreign cultures. The fastest and most effective and efficient way to destroy people is destroying their culture. None but ourselves can allow our cultures to be destroyed. We must embrace our culture. No one will destroy our culture without our consent. The next thing is healthcare systems. Powerful countries have strong healthcare systems and institutions. Our forefathers led certain lifestyles that made them live healthy, like eating certain organic foods. Today, what we are eating is leading us to the grave very early. Fellow Africans, mind what to eat. Mind what to inhale. Mind your eating and drinking habits. Mind your lifestyles. We don't have strong health systems in Africa. Many of us run outside the continent to seek treatment because we don't have strong health care systems and institutions in Africa. Sir so Winston Churchill once said, healthy citizens are the greatest assets any country can have. This is something our so-called leaders never appreciate. Otherwise, they would build hospitals that could treat our sicknesses. But as long as for them, they run outside to seek treatment in proper health care systems, they don't care. That is what politicians do. The next thing is economic strength. Powerful countries trade seriously with one another. This is what is lacking in Africa. No serious intra-Africa trade is taking place at the moment. Powerful countries have powerful currencies. In Africa, we have only soft currencies. No single African country has a hard currency. No country in Africa has a hard currency. How can we be economically strong with weak currencies? There are certain things that we can get from only countries of South Africa. There are things we use in Africa, but no company in Africa can produce them. There are countries that are producing such things and selling them to Africa. We can come together and focus on the products that we can produce and then sell the products to the world. In a period of one to five or ten years, we can be somewhere economical. Powerful countries set their targets for many years. They have master plans. Africans are not really seriously planning. Even when they plan, they don't seriously execute their plans. Powerful countries are ever planning and revising their plans. Africa produces raw materials and sells them to other continents without any serious value added to the raw materials. Therefore, she loses a lot of money. The other continents process the raw materials and sell the products back to Africa very expensively. We must change this. In order for us to take control of our economy as yes, Africa, we must take control of the following three stages of production chain. The first one, the raw materials. The second one, manufacturing. And the third one, service provision. Africa has a lot of raw materials, which it sells to other continents. There is a jump from stage one to stage three. In stage two, which is manufacturing, Africa is lacking completely. Stage two, which is manufacturing, is the missing link between the raw materials and service provision. In order for Africa to take charge of her economy, she must be in charge of her raw materials, the manufacturing processes, and service provision. Africa must implement manufacturing in order to connect raw materials to service provision. We are doing fairly well in stage one, which is the raw materials, and stage three, which is service provision. Africa has raw materials, and we have uh, human resources that we export to other countries. But stage two, which is manufacturing, is where we are lacking completely. And that is where money is, where a lot of money is. As Africans, we must work on stage two. Because manufacturing gives the highest number of jobs in any setting, in any part of the world. In order for us to create jobs for our people, we must take charge of manufacturing. Because when we link the raw materials to service provision through manufacturing, we will be able to employ many of our people. We will need so many people in the product chain to add value to the raw materials to make the final products that we can sell to develop our economy as Africa. If we begin to take control of every venture or system that affects our lives, then we will be a power to reckon with, and the outside world will respect us. We will then occupy our place in the world. We will be able to occupy the rightful position in the world. Why do we import chickens from Peru and Brazil and other countries? Can't we produce our own chickens in Africa? Why do we import even key holders from China? We must produce our own foods as Africans. We must desist from importing foods that are dangerous to our health, but instead produce our own safe foods. How sure can we be that the foods we import are good for our health? How can we be sure that the foods have no dangerous substances that can harm us? 
Can we ever be sure that the foods were made in good faith? In any case, why must we import what we can produce by ourselves? Isn't it shameful to import what we must actually be exporting? We must not import what we should instead be exporting. For that to happen, we must venture into manufacturing so that we can process raw materials into finished products that we can export to the outside continents and import only what we cannot produce. We must be able to supply our own resources for our people. We can create a value chain that can benefit our people. We must take manufacturing very seriously if we must become a superpower as a continent. A cable manufacturing company can partner with a cable packaging company and a transportation company. Together they can create a lot of jobs for people. If we don't take charge of manufacturing, we will never take charge of our economy as Africans because we lack economic power if we don't take charge of manufacturing. We must work closely with communities, whether they are small or big. We must empower every community in every country to produce what they can produce. We have to bring communities together to, to produce and process what they can produce and then help them to market what they produce. We will have producers, marketing professionals, transporters, accountants, and all kinds of people in the value chains. We will employ many people in the production chain. Therefore, many people will benefit from the different ventures we will have in place. But we must be in charge of every venture. If you are not in charge, then we are not in control of what is happening in the system. To reap the benefits of a system, we must control the system. Therefore, we must design the systems ourselves and implement them. We must create platforms where people can bring together human resources to work for the good of the continent. For example, we can create powerful professional platforms where Africans can create their profiles and market their services, skills, knowledge, wisdom and intelligence. We must learn practical skills that we can apply to develop the continent. Our skills, knowledge, wisdom, intelligence must be used to benefit our people first before they are used to benefit other people outside the continent. We must not allow the outside continent to benefit from our skills, wisdom, knowledge, and intelligence without benefiting our people first. The next area is spirituality and religion. In his TEDx talk that he delivered at TEDx Lusaka, Reverend Walter Mwambazi said, religion is the number one cause of poverty in Africa. I challenge fellow Africans to look for that TEDx talk and watch it by Reverend Walter Mwambazi. He said, religion is the number one cause of poverty in Africa. It's a critical statement. In Africa, we are spiritually and religiously confused. Our house is not in order spiritually and religiously. That is why we have so many religious and spiritual differences that make it difficult for us to work together to develop the continent. We are so divided because of our various religious and spiritual affiliations that we cannot easily come together to work together. Despite our religious differences, we should still work together to develop our respective countries and ultimately Africa. The next area is education. Powerful countries have powerful education systems. The education systems solve their problems. In Africa, this is not the case because we did not even design the education systems in our countries. The systems were not designed to solve our problems. If Africa is to develop, then she must design education systems that identify and solve her problems. Our education should address our problems. It is very useless to know how to sketch the map of New York when you cannot even sketch a map of your district, live alone your country. What is the point of studying the Canadian prairies, yet you don't even know about the ranch in your country? For many years, we have been victims of miseducation. One of the best books I've ever read in my life was written by Dr. Godin Woodson Carter. The book is called The Miseducation of the Negro. Look for that book and read it from cover to cover. The Miseducation of the Negro, Dr. Godin Woodson Carter. In the book, Dr. Godin wrote, the mere imparting of information is not education. Hmm. Above all things, the effort must result in making a man think and do for himself. Wow. Think about that statement for a moment. Now, does our education in Africa really make us think and do for ourselves? No. In many countries, this is not the case. We need education that will produce Africans who are mentally awakened rather than conquered. Africa must provide quality education to her sons and daughters. Education that makes someone think creatively and innovatively to identify problems and create solutions to those problems. Education that makes someone identify opportunities and then tap them. Education that makes someone discover their hidden treasure and ultimately tap it for the good of the continent. Seek that kind of education, dear Africans, and you will be very useful to the continent. The next area is innovation and creativity. Powerful countries have great ideas that are innovatively executed into tangible products and services that they can sell to the world. There is no powerful country in the world that is not doing well in innovation and creativity. 
While in Japan, Europe, China, and the US, people are inventing new technologies. In Africa, we are often waiting for them to invent for us the technology so that we can use. How can we lead if we're ever waiting for others to invent for us technologies? We should rise and lead in technology. Africa has some of the best human resources in the world. Unfortunately, many of them are out of the continent. They are building the outside continents. We should encourage them to come back home and build Africa with their wisdom, with their knowledge, with their intelligence. For our people to stay in Africa, we need to provide a conducive environment for them. You cannot love to stay in a home in which there is violence. We all naturally love peace. If we don't keep our brains, we will lose them. There is no magic here. We need to provide a conducive environment for the brains to thrive in Africa, otherwise we will lose them. In my language, we have a very powerful proverb that says, It means a dog goes where it is given bones. You cannot call out to a dog with a whip in your hands and expect the dog to come. When you have a whip in your hands, the whip scares away the dog and makes it run away, even if it wants to come, stay and guard you. For Africa to develop, we must think bigger and bigger and implement our thoughts. Some people think fast while others think slow, but implement fast. Those who are fast thinkers should be thinking while those who are slow thinkers, but fast actors can help in the implementation of their thoughts. Some people should think and come up with critical ideas to, to develop the continent, while some people should implement the ideas. But at all costs, we must think and act. We must think and act. We must think and act as Africans. We can be great thinkers, but only when we act on our thoughts will we ever achieve our targets. Many people have powerful ideas in Africa, but lack funding. We could identify them and raise funds to, to, to support their ideas to develop the continent. The next area is resources. Resources make countries powerful, both human resources and natural resources. Until now, Africa is the rich resource continent in the world in terms of natural resources. Gold, diamond, coltan, copper, and all kinds of resources are in plenty in Africa. Africa must fight for resources and protect them from predators so that she can use her resources for her own development. The other continents are all eyeing our resources. If we don't stay vigilant and guard our resources, then we will lose the resources to the predators. The outside continents always strive to make us think and believe that we need to depend on them. Yet in actual sense, they also need to depend on us because of the resources we have, which they don't have, but they need. As Africans, we need to utilize our resources for our people and the development of our continent. The former president of Tanzania, the late John Pombe Magufuli, one said, in order for Tanzania to realize her potential, she must use her resources for the benefit of our people. I dare say, in order for Africa to realize her potential, she must use her resources for the benefit of our people. Africa will never realize her potential if her resources are not utilized for the benefit of our people. Africa must, therefore, at all costs, guard her resources against all predators. The predators are many, and we know them. The next area is unity. For any people to be powerful in any part of the world, in any setting, at any time, they must be united around a common purpose. The unity in diversity existed in Africa well before colonization. The world will never take us seriously if we don't unite and work for what we want. Firstly, we must define what we want and then come together to work for it. You cannot work for what you have not defined. What price will you pay for what you have not defined? How will you know the price to pay for something undefined? The world will not take us seriously if we don't take ourselves seriously. The problem is that we take the other continents seriously but joke with Africa and still expect the other continents to take us seriously. How? Who will take you seriously if you don't take yourself seriously? Who will value you if you don't value yourself? Who will honor you if you don't honor yourself? Who should honor you more than yourself? Who should love Africa more than Africans? Who should build Africa better than Africans? Who should glorify Africa better than Africans? We know that unity is strength, division is weakness. We are only as strong as we are united and as weak as we are divided. This is something the average modern-day African does not feel appreciate. The other continent used the principle of unity is strength to develop. Africans used that in the past. Our culture brought and kept us together before we were colonized and our systems destroyed. Our unity is in our hands as Africans. We have the power to unite as well as divide. We should not blame our disunity on the outside continents. We must understand that it is our responsibility to unite while the outside continents will always strive to make us divided so that they can take advantage of us. This is something we must never accept. But we must understand that no one will ever divide us without our consent. 
As long as we are divided, we are weak, and the predators can easily steal our wealth. The outside continents will never be able to steal our resources as long as we are united as Africans. The problem is we are too greedy in Africa, and we are too corrupt. We cannot sacrifice to develop Africa when we are greedy and corrupt. We will instead exploit the very people we are meant to serve. How unfortunate that is. The outside continents laid powerful foundations centuries ago for their people. Their children are today building on the foundations. We need such foundations in Africa. We must establish strong systems in Africa that will live even after we will have gone. The future generations will then build on the foundations. It is very unfortunate that unity in Africa is mainly in theory, not practice. You and I should change that and unite now or perish soon. If, let's say, 10 of us come together and work on projects to build Africa, then we can inspire millions of Africans to join us and make their contributions to develop the continent. The next area is proper transport and communication channels. Powerful countries have powerful transport and communication channels. There is proper movement of products, services, and people in those countries. I still don't understand why we still don't have one passport in Africa to date. We're in 2022, and we don't have one passport in Africa. I don't understand this. Perhaps the African Union can tell us why. We need to develop our own communication platform so that we can tell our stories to the world and communicate better with one another. The powerful countries all have their own communication channels, like BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, and others. They tell their own stories. When they're telling their stories, they paint very positive pictures about themselves. But when they're telling stories about Africa, oh my God, they paint very poor images about the continent. For example, the photos of uh, minority children and very poor women selling roasted maize in markets are very common on BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera. Yet there are great things happening in Africa that are never reported in those media channels. Until we have our own media channels, the other continents will always portray mainly negative things about us through their media channels. This African proverb puts it better. Until the lions have their historians, tales of the hunt shall always glorify the hunter. Until Africans have their own media houses, the foreign media houses will always demonize Africa and glorify the other continents. Unless we have our own communication channels, the, the outside media houses will always report mainly bad things about Africa to portray negative images about Africa. As Africans, we must tell our stories ourselves. We can best tell our stories. The outside continents cannot tell our stories better than us. We must not just watch as they tell the world what they want the world to know and believe about us. We must tell the world what the world is supposed to know about us. We should not just watch the outside media houses tell lies about Africa when we can tell the truth about Africa ourselves as Africans. We need our own media houses that we control. The media houses of the outside continent will never ever glorify Africa. Africa must glorify herself. We should write our books, sing our songs, paint our paintings to tell our stories to the world. The foreign media houses will always portray what they want the world to know about Africa, not what the world should know about Africa. There is very poor connection in the continent. Every country has its own telephone cord. This is unfortunate. If I leave Egypt and cross over to Ethiopia, I'm in another telephone zone. This is unfortunate. Because we can unify the telephone cords in Africa and have one cord, like the US, so that if I leave one country in Africa, I don't need to get a SIM card to be able to communicate. The next thing is data. Powerful countries have powerful data collection systems. We are in the, in the information age. There is a lot going on in the world right now. To control our economy, we must have reliable data. Data helps us to know where we are coming from, where we are, and then project where we are going. Where we are coming from should help us to design where we are going from where we are. We cannot predict our future without reliable data. Africa does not have proper data collection systems that serve the entire continent. We should design our own data collection systems and stop relying on data resources we cannot even properly verify and confirm. Without proper data, we shall never be able to project where we are going properly and then design mechanisms to, to get us where we are supposed to be. The next area is peace and stability. Peace and stability exist to a great extent in powerful countries. 
The countries do all they can to maintain stability because wars and conflicts interfere with development. Africa is ever in conflicts. Of course, the conflicts have foreign hands. We can never be powerful when we are frequently in wars and conflicts. Professor Piolo Lumumba once said, Africa in conflict is fodder for the West. That's a deep statement. I love this Kiswahili proverb. When the locusts are fighting, it is the joy of the hawks, because if they kill each other, then the hawks get the food easily. As long as we fight with each other, we will make it easy for the hawks to get the food. We should attain peace in Africa so that we can develop. Peace is the hub of sustainable development in any setting, in any country, at any time. In his book, Things Fall Apart, Chinua Achebe posed this powerful question. Where are the young suckers that will grow when the old banana tree dies? Fellow young Africans, we are the young suckers that should rise and make our contributions. We should not wait for the old banana trees in Africa to first die for us to rise. The question is, have you risen? What are you doing in your own capacity to build Africa? What contributions are you making to building Africa? Don't waste your time on what is beyond your control. Concentrate on what is within your control and do it very well. There are things that we can do now on our own. There are things that we cannot do on our own now. There are things that can be done only by the government. We should focus more on the things that we can do on our own to make proper contributions to building Africa. Where do we begin from? From where we are. With what? With what we have. The question is, where are you politically, socially, economically, culturally, academically, and in all other ways? What do you have where you are? What are you to your family? What are you to your village? What are you to your community? What are you to your society? What are you to your country? What are you to Africa? And ultimately, what are you to the world? There is this powerful African proverb that says, he who follows the track of an elephant never gets wet from the dew on the bushes. It's a very powerful proverb. There are many elephants who have gone before us in building Africa. As young Africans, we should identify them and learn from them. Who are the elephants whose tracks you follow? It is your duty to identify the elephants whose tracks you will follow as you seek to serve Mother Africa. Who are the modern day Kwame Krumas, Patrice Lumumbas, Nelson Mandela, Thomas Sankaras? Who are those who will rise and lead us in technology? Who are those who will rise and lead us in agriculture, in economics, in health, in culture, and in all other areas? In his song, Teach the World, Lucky Dube Sang, take it upon yourself to restore your nation's dignity. We must take it upon ourselves to restore the dignity of Africa as Africans. We must redeem Africa from the jaws of the predators. We must get our minds. Redeeming Africa means redeeming the minds of Africans. If we redeem the minds of Africans, we will automatically redeem Africa. Our problems are in our minds. Our minds are the greatest assets we have. The greatest treasure you have is your mind. How do you use it to develop the continent? The whole world is after your mind. The struggle to redeem Africa is on. Your greatest contribution to the struggle is redeeming your mind. Bob Marley sang in his song, Redemption Song, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. I love that statement. The question is, is your mind liberated? What will be your contributions to the struggle to build Africa? Our future will not be secured by those who seek to secure their own future at the expense of our future. We have to secure our future ourselves through toil, tears, sweat, and blood. Don't put your future in the hands of those who are not thinking of it. Don't ever put your future in the hands of those who do not care about it. Don't you ever put your future in the hands of those who are in the evening of their lives. Their sun is already setting, and it could set with your future. Be in charge of your future. Your future is in your hands. Guard it jealously as you make your contribution to developing Africa. Let us not blame anyone, but perform our respective roles. The blame game is a useless game. Let us not join the wagon of lamentation. We should be in the arena of action, for in the words of Theodore Roosevelt, the credit belongs to the man in the arena. Preserve your life as you strive to serve Africa, because you need to be alive to do what you want to do to build Africa. You will not do anything while in the grave. Let us fight to build Africa. However, let us fight with wisdom. Let us fight with intelligence. 
Let us fight with knowledge. Let us fight with understanding. Let us not fight ignorantly. Otherwise, we shall be eliminated by the powers that be. Be wise. A foolish hunter becomes the hunted. Let us hunt wisely so that we kill the game and bring it home for our people to eat. As Africans, we are the architects of our future. No one will ever design our future apart from us. The future we want can best be designed by us. We know best what we want. We should go after it with all our might. Africans must design and own the development process. We know best what we want as Africans. No other continent can best define for Africa what she wants. Africa must define herself or she will be misdefined by the other continents. Africa can collaborate with the outside continents, but the collaboration must benefit Africans. Otherwise, Africa will be exploited. We must not engage in anything that will not benefit our people. Because whatever doesn't benefit our people destroys our people. We must engage in only ventures that will build our people. Whatever does not build Africans destroys Africans. We can best design what benefits ourselves as Africans. It is our responsibility to define what we want as Africans. Nobody should ever define for us what we want. And nobody can best define for us what we want anyway. We must know best what we want. The question is, do we really know what we want as Africans? Ronald Reagan, the former president of the US, once made a statement that America does what is in our best interest. It's a critical statement that African leaders should take very seriously. America does what is in our best interest. The outside countries, the powerful countries, do what is in their best interest. Now, which African politician does what is in the best interest of their country, live alone Africa? If you don't do what is in the best interest of your country, then how do you expect other countries to respect you? Who will take you seriously if you don't take your country seriously? How can you claim you love your country if you don't do what is in its best interest? The other continents know what they want. They do what is in their best interest to get what they want. What are we doing as young Africans in the best interest of Africa today? Fellow Africans, many have spoken before us. Many are speaking with us. Many will speak after us. But what will make us different from those who speak but do nothing is what we do after speaking. We must not only talk but act. I always tell fellow Africans that the Africa we want will not be built by singing but by swinging into action. What actions will you take to build the Africa we want? We are the giants of Africa. Don't take baby steps to build Africa. Take giant steps. For you are giants. Isn't it unfortunate for giants to take baby steps? Why should giants take baby steps? Can babies take giant steps? Giants can take giant steps, and babies take baby steps. As the giants of Africa, let us take giant steps to build Africa. I will close philosophically. Now in life, there are four types of people. Four types of people. The players, the watchers, the wanderers, and the wanderers. The players are the people who train so hard to play in the game of life with an ambition of winning the game. They train so hard and give it their all. They are the people who get into the playground and will heartedly play the game despite the risk of injuries and red cards and yellow cards. They are the true winners, the victors, the medalists, and the champions. They never stop at anything until they win. They achieve their dreams, goals, and plans until they reach the stars. They toil, persist, and endure all the challenges patiently without ever giving up and losing hope. They fix their focus on the final goal, not on the process and the challenges on the way. These are the millionaires, the highly successful people, the role models, the legends, and the icons. They are the ones who make it even though the odds are uneven. They create a path where there is none. They level mountains and surpass barriers that others fear to encounter. They are on the field. They are in the arena of action, making their contributions. They are the ones who sacrifice and practice until they are the best that they can be. They do what they love and love what they do. They reap the rewards of their efforts. They use their power to make things happen. They take the risk and get the rewards. Next, we have the watchers. These are the people who enter into the stadium where the game is being played, but instead decide to sit at the pavilions to spectate the game. They analyze, blame, correct, and even wish to change the game, but they don't get out of their comfort zones, out of their seats to enter into the pitch to play the game. They only admire, coach, praise, shout at, cheer the players, and criticize from their seats. They are forever the praise singers and the vocalists. They never try playing, and therefore they never win any medal or trophy. 
The watchers are the spectators sitting in the stands, watching others play the game of life, watching someone else get the money, the recognition, and the prize. Everyone not in the playing field is a spectator. True watchers are the people who never really try hard at anything. They may dream of being a player, but at the first sign of difficulty, challenge, or disappointment, they discard their dreams and scurry off the playing field of life, silently vowing never to try that again. These wannabe players taking their seats in the stands with carefully crafted excuses and explanations for not being in the game. Watchers generally are the people who had a dream but let it get compromised. They are wistful thinkers. They often say, I should have done this, or I could have been that, or I should have had a good life. Then we have the wanderers. These are the people who come to where the match is being played, but never enter inside the stadium, where they can either play or watch the game. They are either distracted outside the stadium, or they fear spending their money to enter inside the arena of action. Therefore, they wander outside the stadium. They hear the cheers, the boos, and the shouts coming from the stadium, but cannot see what is happening inside the arena of action. They are either not bothered, or they just ignore the cheers. These are the people who later will ask the results of the game from those who enter the stadium to watch the game. The wanderers are the people in the parking lot outside the stadium where the game is being played. They hear the sound of players and the spectators, but they are not a part of the game. They know something is going on, but they must only wonder what exactly it is, since they cannot see. Wanderers learn about what is going on secondhand. They live their lives responding to outer stimuli and developing other people's programs. They often see the world in terms of would have, could have, and should have. Finally, we have the wanderers. These are the people who get stuck on the road to the stadium where the game is being played. They start their journey to, to the venue, but get lost on their way. They never reach it. They either lose morale for reaching the stadium or get distracted on their way. They end up not reaching the venue and not watching the game. They just give up before making it to the stadium. These people lose it all. Their lack of focus and persistence result in their destruction even with the slightest challenges encountered. The wanderers are the people who are lost on the dirty road of the freeway to the parking lot outside the game of life. They have no idea what is going on and don't plan to find out. The wanderers are like pistol in the wind. They blow from pillar to post without goals, plans, or roads. Ruled by their addictions and their appetites, they live for the moment and nothing more, and they never make their contributions. Fellow Africans, I ask you then, are you a player? Are you a watcher? Are you a wanderer? Or are you a wonder? Choose you now where you belong and start to embrace changes that will transform the continent and catapult you to where you truly want to belong as an Africa. Choose you now what you will be as you strive to make your contributions to building Africa. Choose you now what you will do to build Africa. The choice is yours to make. And remember that every choice you make makes you. And every choice has consequences. And the consequences are inbuilt in the choice. What will you choose as you serve Africa? We can build Africa. We can develop Africa. We can bring the changes we want to see in Africa. All of us must take it upon ourselves to develop our continent. No one will develop Africa for us. It is our collective responsibility to develop Africa as a continent. Take it upon yourself to develop Africa. Make your contributions and make it now. Do not sit for your arms and watch as a continent perishes. We must come together and fight for what we want or we will perish together. Either we unite and develop Africa, or we divide and perish together. As Africans, our future is in our hands. As Africans, our prosperity is in our hands. As Africans, our success is in our hands. What kind of future do we want for Africa? Thank you very much. God bless you all, and God bless Africa. Wow, wow, wow. This is just, this is just phenomenal, and phenomenal, and phenomenal. Rom Giants. What we have to say, we've heard so much from Freedom Giant and George Lazarus Okello, who has given much insights. You know, he spoke about how we need strong success and institutions, how we need vibrant institutions that correlate with the kind of democratization we need to see in Africa. He just spoke about how in, in, we need strong leaderships in our countries, strong leaderships wherever we are in our cabinets, our governments, wherever in boards, in public uh, sectors, in companies, in factories in business enterprises, wherever, how we strong leaderships and not basically political leadership, just to just throw power and just misbehave and manipulate things anyhow, just for their own good. He spoke about how we need institutions that are efficient everywhere, right from, right, from, right from health to agriculture to sports to education. He spoke about how we need strong data collection skills, how we need to stand tall as a people. It's 
fight for our people. One thing he spoke about, which was very phenomenal, was when he spoke about how we need to love ourselves first before we can decide to even love our content. Because if we don't love ourselves and we begin to love our content, then indeed there will be a miscalculation of things. And people will not be able to realize what we, what, who we are and what we are trying to portray as a people. But we need to first of all love ourselves, cherish ourselves. And that's how people will be able to understand which we to carry and know that indeed the African gem is made of excellence. We are made of excellence, but until we begin to personalize who we are and turn towards the values of our country, our natural anatomy, of where we come from, of where we originate, of where our citizens are destined, our citizens, our citizenship is destined in, there will be a question mark on ourselves. We need to turn towards, and indeed, that's how we will see peace and stability everywhere. That's how, indeed, we can build on our brand and begin to portray the new Africa, whereby Al Jazeera and BBC and CNN cannot dictate to us who we are because we know who we are already. And when we stand to us people, we to progress and build on a better and better and better and better, better, better Africa. We thank very much from Giants, Job Laros. This has been a very, very insightful lecture which we've all learned from. And that is what we call an anatomy. We all relate with each other. We all learn from each other. We hear from from legend um, Dennis to Mumba in the morning. We also hear from from Giants, um, Job Lazarus. And we'll be hearing from um, Honorable um, Ajuno. Uh, I would wish to give uh, Halima Abdul Karim a little an opportunity to to submit uh, her item, Madam Halima. I was just very impressed by the lecture, the way he was able to outline the different aspects that need to be improved, and how he was able to also um, differentiate between leadership and uh, political. Um, he goes more into politics and those um, individuals into leadership. I never uh, knew that uh, distinction until he talked about it today. I was very, very impressed. He, he did a very, very good job. He needs to give this lecture for a larger populace, not only here. I, I'm, I'm hoping that he has it already outlined or written or typed somewhere. So he, she needs to give it to a larger populace was very, very good. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Halima. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Halima, uh, for the brief uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Halima, the job. Let us all unite and celebrate together. Let us dedicate ourselves to rise together